Hi, I'm Dr. Evan Matthews. I'm here at Montclair State University in the Exercise Science Lab to show you how to use a Vertex. So a Vertex is used to measure someone's reach height as well as someone's jump height. Alright, so once all put together, the Vertex is essentially two pieces. It is this a large piece that it was uh, assembled that has the, the different flags for actually measuring height and it's going to have the um, rod that's used to straighten these these flags back out. So when somebody's hit them, you use this to make it all straight again. So when using a Vertex, there's a couple different ways of dealing with um, standing reach height when you're trying to calculate jump height. So uh, how far somebody actually goes from the ground up into the air. All right, so one of those is to raise this so that the bottom flag here is at the level of the reach height. So you raise it until they can just barely touch that and then wherever they jump and smack, all of those flags then represent actual uh, jump height. The other way of doing it is to simply measure their reach height, then measure their jump height and do the subtraction of the two. Alright, so we're going to be using the method where you simply measure their reach height and then you measure their jump height and do the subtraction. So I, I personally think it's a little easier and gives you more information. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to change this, um, this uh, how high this tubing is. And so to do that, you unscrew this red bolt and you simply raise it up until it gets to whatever level you want it to be. So looking at this pole, there are different measurements on the pole. Whatever that measurement says there, so if you line up the, the line on this silver pole with the top of the red pole, that tells you what the bottom flag's height is. All right, so right now it says six foot, which means this bottom flag is six foot tall. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to raise this up to a point where you think somebody will be able to sort of hit the bottom one, but not the top flag. All right, so if they can hit the bottom flag, but not the top flag, then you're going to be able to get a measurement. All right, so first do this for them just simply walking through. So you're going to have them reach up and walk and sort of stretch and just hit as many of the flags as they can without sort of extending their calves and lifting themselves off the ground. You just want to, again, see how tall they are and how far they can reach. Once you have that and you write that, that number down, how far they reached, you're going to then raise this, sh this shaft up even further and have them do their actual jump height. So have them jump and smack as many as they can and then do that a few times, get the best trial that they can do. And then you simply do the subtraction. So how high did they jump versus how high did they reach when they just walk through and that is their vertical jump. All right, so there's two different methods for having people jump. One is to have them standing straight up go deep down and then jump and explode up as high as they can. So that's called a counter movement jump. So that counter movement going down before you explode up. So you want to do that very quickly. So you're going to go down and up in one fluid motion like you would do if you were in an athletic event. All right, so what that's going to do is going to add a little bit of elastic um, recoil force as well as it's going to bring some proprioceptors into the movement which is going to increase the ability to jump. All right, so that's the reason why I typically use that is because I think it's a little more applicable to what's going to happen in actual sporting events and it's a little more sort of native and natural for the person so they don't feel quite as awkward doing it. The other way of doing it, if you want to see how much force they can produce without having any sort of elastic force or having any sort of proprioception, um, so any muscle spindle kind of force being produced, is you can have them do the counter movement, pause at the bottom, and then just explode up. All right, so one, they're going down and up quickly. The other one, they're going down, pausing, and then jumping. So whichever one you're choosing to use, you should have a reason for that. Again, I tend to do the one where they're going down quickly, jumping up immediately, because I think it's more applicable to most sports. All right, so this is the top part of the Vertec. This has all the different flags here that are used for measurement. And so if you look here, we have three different color flags. We have the red flags, like these ones here. These ones are going to be every six inches. We have the blue flags, like these ones here. These ones are going to go every one inch. And then we have the white flags that are in between those, and that is every half an inch. So if somebody were to jump up and smack this and say they knocked, um, we'll do... We'll do those there. So let's say somebody jumped up and knocked that. And let's say that the base height was set to eight feet. That means we would have eight feet, eight feet one, eight feet two, eight feet three, eight feet four, eight feet five. If they got another white flag here, 
that would be eight foot five and a half inches. If they got this next one here, this red flag, that would be eight foot six. So again, every red flag is six inches, every white flag is a half an inch, and every blue flag is one inch. So whenever somebody jumps, you just wanna uh, count how many flags they, they knocked out of the way, do the quick math to figure out how high they actually jumped, and then you wanna put these flags back by using that pole I showed you earlier. And so that it's nice and flat and easy to see what flags they hit on the next trial. All right, so that was a real quick overview on how to use a vertex to measure jump height. So that's something that's used all the time in athletic facilities as well as in exercise science labs to measure that. So if you have any questions, you can put those in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. And otherwise, please come back and watch another video. Thanks.